Well, and my thing is, I didn't ask for your opinion. That's fine, eat less. If that's what you enjoy and that's what's working for you, eat less. I mean, I think there was a time in my life where no one could have eaten as, li as little as I could eat. But you were gaining weight when you did that. I was gaining weight. I was not nourishing my body. Yeah. I didn't have the energy that I needed to sustain the life that I wanted to live. We are not supposed to avoid eating food. Right. We're supposed to eat food. You know what I never see Tabitha do or the cat do or the chickens do? Weigh their food. I want you to see the froth at the top of my coffee. This is black coffee. I am trying to get ready for triple B and E. You have a couple of weeks still. But I well, but I know that I need to start reining back the level of party going on in my coffee mug. But I want my whipped cream. I have two more weeks. I know. I'm sorry, but like I, I, I allowed you to help me stay on track by just putting some butter in your coffee this morning. Um, but I thought it was weird that just whipping it up as it came out of the Nespresso machine created the illusion that there is frothing and fun going on, but it's just black coffee. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is 2crazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we have an opportunity to say good morning you'll be alerted to it. Good morning. You know, we have been sharing mornings in our pajamas mm -hmm. <laughs> with no makeup and, 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 and no hair. And not great coffee. Um, For a while now. And yeah. I'm glad, like I'm thankful for you. I don't say that enough, but I'm really thankful for the opportunity to just be real with you, it's nice to share our lives. I'm gonna with be people. real. I'm not happy right now. I feel it. I'm not happy. I, I have two weeks. I have two weeks. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I have two weeks. So we we're going to Kentucky. Wow. In a couple of days. Okay. And my plan was to have fun. Aside from the fact it's Keto Palooza and we're gonna automatically have fun, but my plan was fun up leading up to fun those up days. my food because is this your fun, yeah, your fun is in here. My, my not in here. You're the one who started the whipped cream. Not in here. <laughs> is my fun in here? You're the one who started the whipped cream, I did. and you just want to take it away from me. You're gonna rip away. My, I mean, I need it ripped away because I really need this beef butter bacon egg challenge because, like, I'm upset that I don't have whipped cream right now. Like, that that says a lot. This is kind of a warning. Maybe we should put this in the group, but this is kind of a warning that... You may get angry with each other. You may get a little surly on Triple B and E. Anytime that you try to change something or do something or challenge yourself in some way you can get some strong feelings about it. I know that even going to our first like conference, I was excited, like I wanted to participate, but there was so much feelings. There yeah. was nervousness, there was anxiousness, there was like worry. And oh I, my gosh. I, can you remember, there was times I when we were like arguing over packing because, and this was something I had signed up for, but I was just so worried about Living it out. I just remember our first Keto Palooza, not Keto Palooza, um, Keto, uh, Keto Con. Keto Con. And we were going, and I'm like, nobody's going to know who we are. And you're like, everyone's going to. I'm like, don't get your hopes up. We have 250 subscribers. But it created an argument because, like, well, I was like, I don't want to go. I'm fat. And I don't even think it was about really like recognition. I mean, I was aware we only had 
like a couple of followers. I wasn't expecting for people to know us. What I was hopeful for was that someone would talk to us. Yeah. Like even a stranger. Well, that's what I mean. You'd be like, hi, and someone would say hi back. And we kind of had a track record in the past of like our own personal experiences that like putting ourselves out there didn't really return yeah, I, I didn't want to go because I felt like I was fat and nobody's going to like me. And I remember you trying to make me feel better, being like, don't worry, somebody's going to recognize us. And I'm like, no, and nobody nobody wants to talk to me. And, you know, it's and it has in the past, you know, like created disagreements because you would get super excited and I'd be like, no. And like, you're super excited for beef, butter, bacon, and egg. And I'm I like, am. No, I mean, now, I like I said, I need this because <clears throat> I have allowed heavy cream to come back into my life. I mean, here's the funny part is growing up in pre-keto, my coffee was what? always coffee with just cream in it. Like, right. I never put sweetener in my coffee. Ever. Ever. I, it was, you were the sweetener person. I was a sweetener I, person. I grew up drinking you know like you would go to the the deli like in new york you had like corner delis right and i always ordered my coffee just light whereas you hear light and sweet i just wanted it light i i wasn't a sweetener the only time i had sweetener in my coffee was at starbucks with the frozen drinks but let's face it that's not a coffee drink. That's a milkshake. Right. Well, and it's funny because I can remember over the years dialing it back to black. Right. Like I would have black coffee because I became very conscious of calorie counting. Like I had that diet mentality and I did bring it to my coffee mug. And so I was drinking it black and not adding a bunch of stuff because I was very calorie conscious. And it's funny to me. A lot of people are very like worried about calories and they will question about the calories in beef and in meat and in adding butter. But I see that people will still kind of be loosey goosey in their coffee. Right. Like it's a free for all in here, but then like it's really hard for me to wrap my mind around a thousand calories a day of food. And it's like, you know, stuff's going on in here too. When like, we got started, my average coffee was like 600 calories. Right. right. So if I was thinking, I can't imagine like, a, you know, 1,200 calories a day is a lot for me. But if 600 of those is in your coffee in the mm. morning, that's kind of weird. I mean, weird. now that is a good place where people are like, I just can't get more fat into my diet. Well, coffee's a great place to get it in. Yeah. Because you can throw a couple tablespoons of butter into your coffee and instantly you just got an extra like 20 grams of fat. And here's the thing is I love when people are like, butter sounds weird in coffee, especially people outside of keto. Butter sounds weird. You know, milk and butter. What do you think heavy cream is? Right. Like, you make butter by taking heavy cream and churning it. As yes. a matter of fact, like you actually can accidentally make butter when you're trying to make heavy you're cream, calling whipped cream. me out, aren't you? Because I've done that on more than one occasion. Yeah, you try to make whipped cream and keep going, and the next thing you know, I have butter. So what's the difference? It's it's literally it's the here. same thing. It's just in your mind. Yeah. So uh, we're going to do a full day of eating, and um, I've got so much to do. <laughs> I, I have to go cut grass. I do not want to start my day. Um, I got to go cut grass, and... I have not begun packing, and we're leaving in like two days. And um, I why, also why trouble yourself with these well, little things? This time I have an excuse why I haven't begun packing, because I can't get to my clothes, and like in order to pack, I have to do a project that I've been putting off for like a week and a half right now. I have said nothing. Look at your dog. She's relaxing. I don't even know how she lays like this. She's like... Nobody relaxes like Tabitha relaxes. The thing is, is when she's laying like this, usually her canine teeth are out. Yeah. And it makes her look like she is super dangerous. Yeah. Only then you see her. She's and not super dangerous. 
This dog, I mean, look at those teeth. I mean, they, they can be, they can do some damage. And, <laughs> but <laughs> she's like, no, I, I, I just, I just want to be loved on. By the way, this is my couch and. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is her couch. She's the only person who has like adult furniture in this house. Rachel, let's go, come on. Why are you doing this now? I thought that you had a bunch of work that you needed to do. You want me to be honest? Yeah. Because I want to procrastinate the work that needs to be done. <laughs> do you do that? A lot. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so I've been putting this off for like five days and I want to continue putting it off because it's going to be a lot of work. But the other night at like two o'clock in the morning, my closet fell. Like, what is that for? Someone's at our door. I have not had a fit that there is a collapsed closet in your closet and it is nearest to me. It yeah. is like right by where I sleep. You have to look at it. And I have to look at a demolished closet. For like five days, I've been living off of what can I see? So I have the one side with the shirts and then the other side, like there's stuff in there. Like I haven't packed yet. This is floor clothes. Um, and I'm like, okay, like, okay, what can I see? And it, there's not much cause it's just piled upon pile. And I've been putting it off but I need to do it. It just means like emptying the entire closet and removing all the racks. In fact, the stuff to repair it has been in my car for five days and I've been just driving the truck because- To avoid it. Yeah, because it's sitting in the car. Procrastination and avoidance. Is it a thing for you like it is a thing for Joe? Here's my thing is I figured that if we film this part of the video right now- Just a little longer. I, it's a little bit longer that I don't have to clean my closet. Okay. So we went to Sprouts and while I was at Sprouts, I found a couple of Zevias that we've never tried before. How has this escaped our attention? I don't know because I, I, by the way, I really, really like the new like labeling. Maybe we haven't had it yet because it is trying to be an energy drink, not just a diet soda. But they've had energy drinks, which they weren't bad. Um, I, they weren't I, Celsius, <laughs> clearly. I don't know, I'm really excited about trying these. So um, raspberry lime, and we have pineapple paradise. Ooh. So just, we'll go over the ingredients. I was gonna do a five things, but there's no point. Uh, carbonated water, citric acid, natural flavors, organic stevia leaf extract, and organic caffeine. Basically, it's the same as the soda, the same ingredients as the soda, only they're adding caffeine. I'm not opposed to this. I mean, that's cleaner than Celsius for some people who don't like sucralose. Right. So which one do we want to try? I want to end on the pineapple because I'm very much looking forward to pineapple. The problem like pineapple. is if we open both of these, I'm stuck drinking one of them and I'm sure it's going to be the one that I like, but you, I, that, I, I'm sure it's not going to be the one that I like because you're going to like the one that I like as well. Okay, so number one, I want you to get your hopes up. Okay. Don't come into something with a negative mindset. You're always right? reminding me to think positive. The next thing I'm gonna tell you is, you do intend on actually working on your closet after this segment, right? Is it for real? Cause that's gonna determine what I say next. Yes. Okay, since you have now on camera committed to doing your closet, here's my reward for stopping your procrastination and avoidance. You get to have whichever one you like best. Deal. That was awkward. <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> There you go. And now a fist bump. Now so fist we bump. get both the things. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay. So this one is the raspberry lime. It's very raspberry up front. I don't know how they've accomplished this, but the first taste is raspberry and then the second sip or the back end is lime. Like I get all yeah. raspberry and then I get all lime. Wow. I don't get raspberry lime. I get that is, I gotta try you, that. I gotta try that again. How did you do that, Zevia? That is actually what happened. As soon as it hits your tongue, raspberry. raspberry. And now, lime. lime. That is weird. That's really weird. That like, is I weird. I don't taste the combination. It's very raspberry up front. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I mean, I'm not a huge berry person. So would I... 
Would I buy it again? Probably Probably not. no, because I'm not a berry person. But it is true to form raspberry. So if you're somebody that's like enjoys raspberry, like that's one of your favorite flavors, you gonna love this because it definitely tastes like raspberry. Okay. And then lime at the back. Pineapple paradise. <laughs> what does paradise taste like? We're gonna find out because I'm assuming it's gonna be pineapple up front and whatever is paradise. Is it paradise fruit or like passion fruit type thing? You try Mmm. Yes, pineapple up front, baby. It it's like a sparkling pina colada. Oh yeah. So the back note is coconut. Yeah. The back note is like the coconut milk flavor. If you enjoy it's a, pina a colada. sparkling pina colada. Ooh. I got to get another sip in because clearly this is going to be Joe's favorite. Mmm. This I would purchase again. Definitely. Definitely, I would purchase that again. That's that's really good. It reminds me. Okay, so. Is it better than a Celsius is my question. Probably not. Not for me either. <laughs> Celsius wins still. However, this is delicious. Listen, people ask all the time like about sucralose and like why sucralose? Why do we like liquid sucralose over liquid stevia? It tastes better. Yeah. It's. It just, it's 600 times sweeter than sugar and there's no sweetener out there that tastes better than, like, there's no alternative sweetener that tastes better than sucralose. Um, stevia, a drop too much, you've gone off the deep end, it gets super bitter. Stevia is bitter to begin with. Um, I don't mind sucralose. We've talked about this extensively. But the bottom line is, is the one flaw that talks about sucralose and being bad for your gut biome is flawed. It's you called it a flaw. You mean the 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 study? The one study. It's it's well, I said flawed study. It's it is flawed. They were feeding it to rats. Number one, we are not rats. Number Dirty two, rats. the rats were not eating a ketogenic diet that I am. And number three, they were feeding them more sucralose in a day than I eat in six months. Yeah. So it's like all of that makes me throw out your study. So you know what this would be good for? Because to me, it almost is borderlining a mixed drink. It comes through to me like a- What do you want to add vodka to it? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that reminds me of one of these like zero carb seltzers, like alcoholic beverages that they're trying to market to the keto community, okay? Except for those have sugar in them. Those do have sugar in them, all right? Anything that says zero carb run, all right? Because it's not zero carb. But- if you are in a situation where people are drinking and mm. the, and you have an opportunity to be like, okay, well, I would reach in this instance for one of those low carb seltzers, you could use this, feel like you were having like a drink and not actually kick your butt out of ketosis by drinking, drinking an, an al alcoholic yeah, because drink. because even the zero carb seltzers that have alcohol in them are kicking you out of ketosis regardless of what your meter says. That's that's another whole video. Yeah. And, and the thing about, I mean, these are okay. They're, they're yeah. I, do I think they're better than Celsius? No. no. Are they going to replace Celsius? No. The only difference really between these and Celsius for the most part is the sweetener. Yeah. Um, the Celsius, I think, are the cleanest energy drinks out there. I, 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 again, it, take out the sweetener they're the same. And so, but these, I'm gonna nurse it more. There's an out, there's a drinking term. I'm gonna nurse this more than a Celsius. Which would work great if you're going to like a party or you're like out with, with friends and they're nursing a beer and you're trying to nurse something different, now, right? Now, do I think this is gonna give you energy? Probably not. I mean, unless they're just adding a ridiculous amount of caffeine and they're not telling you on here how much caffeine is in here, but it is the last ingredient so not much. Um, oh, it does. Up on the top, 120 milligrams of caffeine. So it, it's going to give you like energy like a cup of coffee gives you energy. It's not It's not bang, right? It's certainly not Thank bang. God, though. Like, I, I don't know. I could not drink bangs. When, when we first started keto, bang was like everywhere and really marketed to the keto community. And you saw a lot of advertisement. 
Bang was like built bars for me. I would drink it and then like lose time and space and like wake up in a forest somewhere punching a tree. Like I don't know what was in Bang that interacted with me so badly because clearly I am like a big girl when it comes to being able to take on caffeine. But there was something in a Bang that was like no bueno for me. So I'm really glad that this ain't a Bang. Let us know down in the comment section, have you tried the this one again, what is it, Pineapple Paradise? That's where it's at. Or Raspberry Lime, what were your thoughts on it? I'm done. It's all done. It's all done. I'm here to inspect the finished product. I forgot to film what it looked like beforehand though. You mean to say that you were embarrassed so badly by how it looked that you don't want to show nobody. Do you have to call me out like that? I'm I sorry. mean, it's accurate, but do you have to call me? I don't I'm throw sorry. you under the bus like that. Never, never. Oh my gosh. Now, wait a second, before you say anything, the answer is no. What do you think the question is? The question is, what are you doing mine? Yes, that was the question. <laughs> wow. But, okay, I could do yours, but that means you have to get rid of all of your totes. Well, I mean, I'll consider it. I mean, I could figure it out, but like, look at this. This. Feels Let me zoom out. Like you have so much room. Uh, well, so before there was one shelf here to hang clothes, right? Yes. And then it was like right here. So it was like mid-level wasting a space. And then I just stacked garbage on I top. I love how your shoes have and then place. There I didn't, I had one little one over here, but these wire racks, like they never hung right. Well, I found this one that's got like where you could put a bar on it. Yeah. And then over here, it was the same thing. So now I basically raised the one up. I put a shelf up there. And then one there, and that bar goes all the way around, so I get more hanging room. And then I added this one over here, so I have more. So now my clothes aren't all jumbled. And wait, so turn around. Now the shoelace is in the way, but try to, like, move the pants around to where you are. Oh. It, it, like, literally, you don't have to, like, jump from one side to the other. They just kind of, like, go over. I'm so happy for you. I'm really happy. <laughs> I'm very happy. And I got all my shoes off the floor because now they're all just like stacked up. I have a lot of hocus. What's wrong? I want a closet like this. Okay, Joe, I want pizza. What kind of pizza do you want? I don't care, just a lot. Probably the chicken crust pizza is fine. Sometimes I don't do as well with like the cheese crust, the fathead dough. I do better with the chicken crust pizza. So I want a big honking chicken crust pizza. Okay, we're gonna make the chicken crust pizza that Rachel wants, but we're gonna make it a little bit different for a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't have any ground pork rinds and I don't have any pork rinds other than the ones that I have to pop. And honestly, I feel too lazy right now to go ahead and make pork rinds and then grind my pork rinds up to make ground pork rinds. So our chicken crust 2.0 recipe calls for ground pork rinds. So since I don't have them, I'm gonna try to use this Carnivore Crisp chicken flour. Now, you don't even have to buy this, it's super convenient to buy it. And we have a discount code, I'll leave all those links down below. But we also have a recipe on how you could make your own meat flour. You don't even have to use chicken, you could probably use beef. As a matter of fact, I'm probably gonna use a combination, Shh, don't tell Rachel, but I'm probably gonna use a combination of the chicken flour and then the beef organ flour. Okay, I won't tell her. <laughs> because I don't have even a full half a cup of this and I'm doubling the recipe. So that's first, so hopefully this works, but I think it will. Um, I probably don't even need as much as the pork rinds because this is like super, super absorbent. But we get a lot of questions from people about the chicken crust pizza recipe asking, can you use ground chicken? Which you can, but you really have to get all that liquid out and it's gonna take a long time to dehydrate. And they also ask, do I have to use canned chicken? Can I use other cooked chicken? Which you can. So that's what we're gonna to do today. One of the things that I like to do is when we go to Costco, they sell like pulled chicken breasts. Like this is a package of it. I actually repackage it because what I do is I buy it and then I keep it in the refrigerator and I take some out and then I re-vacuum seal it in my JVR vac sealer. 
because this will stay like this for like over a month. Actually, I think the shelf life is like two months when it's vacuum sealed. So what this is, is it's just chicken breast. So what they do is at the end of the day, any of the you know whole chickens that they sell, those big chickens that they sell for five dollars, whichever doesn't sell, they pull it apart. They take the legs and the thighs and they actually sell them in some of them separately where you can go in the next day and get yesterday's legs and thighs. And we do that, it's delicious because then you can take the skin and crisp it up. But they take the chicken breast off and they sell it this way and then they also make chicken salad with it, which the chicken salad is really good, but they use bad mayo. So we started buying this chicken breast and then making our own chicken salad. But then also this stuff is really good because you can just always have it in the refrigerator, again, vacuum seal it up or put it in an airtight container. And when you just need something, this is a grab and go. You can put some tomato sauce on top of it along with some mozzarella cheese and almost have like a, a chicken casserole and you know, so lots of different things you can do with this. So we're gonna make the chicken crust pizza with this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take my chicken breast and I'm gonna chop it up into little pieces and make it fine, kind of like what's coming out of the cans of chicken. Now after I've got this completely chopped up, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spread it onto a dehydrator tray. Now you have to make sure you're using one of these trays that has little tiny holes, not the grade, because obviously this chicken's not gonna sit on the uh, grade, it's gonna fall right through. So you're just gonna spread it nice and thin. And then I'm gonna put it into my dehydrator for about an hour at 167 degrees. One thing about using this chicken breast, it's going to dry a lot quicker than when you're using the canned chicken because obviously the canned chicken is soaking in water and this isn't. So that's why you can put it in the dehydrator at 167 degrees as opposed to like drying it in your oven at like 500 degrees. So if you're not gonna use a dehydrator, you're gonna put it into the oven, but I would probably put it in there at like 300 degrees for maybe 15 or 20 minutes and then go ahead and check it. Okay, so our chicken is dry. This is absolutely perfect. Probably could have gotten away with uh, putting it in there for about 45 minutes, but this is good enough. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this into a bowl. I'm gonna add my Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna start off with about a quarter of a cup of chicken flour, cause that's what I have. Then I'm gonna add in my cream cheese and then my eggs. And again, this is a double batch. And now I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up. What I do is I start off with mixing with a spatula to just kind of get the eggs all mixed in. And then I'm gonna use my hands and knead in that cream cheese. Well, the good news for Rachel is, it looks like because that chicken flour is much more absorbent than pork rind crumbs, I only needed to use a quarter of a cup of the chicken flour and I didn't have to add any of the beef organ blend. So now what I do is I take a pan and I put it upside down because I'm just gonna bake a big rectangle and I spray a little bit of avocado oil or coconut oil on here and we're not cooking with the oil. I'm actually using that to make a piece of parchment paper stick to the pan so it doesn't move around. Then I take my chicken crust dough and I put it on top of this. And I think I actually have a lot of dough here. And I'm gonna kind of flatten it out. We may end up making more than one pizza. And then I put another piece of parchment paper over it and I roll this out. Now what I can do is just kind of pick it up I take my pan, I'll wipe that off, and then I put my pizza back in here. Now we'll go ahead and put this in the oven and bake it for a little while, and then after that, we put the toppings on. So now we're gonna just take some of our tomato sauce or our spaghetti sauce, and we're going to cover our whole crust. Then I'm gonna put some cheese on it. I'm gonna put some ground pork that we browned up and then added a little bit of tomato sauce to. A couple pieces of bacon that we had the other day from a different recipe video. And we have some leftover top sirloin, also known as picanha, that we had made. And uh, we're gonna put that on top. Wouldn't be a pizza without pepperoni. So I'll put a bunch of pepperoni on the top. And then a little more cheese across the top. 
This thing is heavy. I wanna see how much it weighs. We're gonna go ahead and weigh it in the pan. And then what we'll do is we'll subtract the pan later on. We'll weigh the pan after we take the pizza out. So with the pan, this pizza is five pounds. I'm telling you, I think this pizza is about four pounds. Let us know down in the comment section before we let you know later on in the video. Go down there right now and type your guess for how much this pizza weighs because I think it's gonna weigh like four pounds. It's gotta weigh a decent amount because I put a pound of ground pork alone on there. Then you have the cheese, the pepperoni, the beef. I mean, the chicken, so it, it's gonna be up there. Let us know down in the comment section, how much do you think this thing weighs? Now we'll go ahead and put this in the oven and melt all that cheesy goodness. So this margarita pizza sauce is what we're gonna be using on today's pizza, but I think it's important for us to mention yet again, about pizza and pasta sauces when it comes to keto because you may look and see, hey, this particular pasta sauce or pizza sauce has only three grams of total carbohydrates. Wow, I've seen a lot of other Rao's spaghetti sauces that have way more total carbohydrates than that. Well, check the serving size because the truth is in the serving size. So a lot of times when you get pasta sauce, regular tomato sauce, it's going to be a half cup serving. So what is magical about this pizza sauce? Nothing. It's just that it is a fourth a cup in a serving size. So make sure that you're taking a look because there is actually six total carbs per half cup normal pasta tomato sauce serving. It's just that a lot of times, even within the same brand, you may have different products that have different serving sizes. So make sure that you're taking a look at that. Now, I know some people are just all together aggravated with Rouse because Campbell's recently bought them up. Now, it's not a problem for us. One of the reasons why we're not too concerned about it is they have a great pasta sauce. It's good, just like it is. That's why we've been buying it. So it really doesn't benefit Campbell's at all to put a bunch of wonky ingredients in this tomato sauce and make it taste terrible, right? Or make it taste like something that we don't wanna purchase. Sugar. Add sugar. We're, we're just gonna stop buying it. So it doesn't behoove them to purchase a company and then change the product. So we've seen in the past that some companies just buy it and this becomes one of their, you know, horses in their stable of products, right? So for us, it's not a problem, but if you are interested in swapping out Rao's for something else that's also a good pasta sauce, we found this Yo Mama's over at Costco and it's really good. It's a marinara sauce and let me read you the ingredients. Fresh tomatoes, fresh onions, fresh garlic, white wine, organic chicken stock, which is just vegetable stock and turmeric, olive oil, fresh basil, salt, oregano, and black pepper. You didn't hear any sugar in there. You didn't hear any wonky ingredients, wonky oils, really good stuff in here. So a serving size for this is half a cup. And with that, you're gonna get 60 calories, 4.5 grams of fat, a gram of protein, and five total carbs. So this is very, very impressive. Now again, different flavors, you're gonna get different things. If I add garlic, if I add vegetables and make this chunky, it's going to change the macros on, on this. But this one is just marinara. And a lot of times the simpler the ingredients, the less carbs are gonna be in it. One thing I wanna say, somebody just heard five carbs and go, oh, that's less carbs than rouse. Not necessarily. Don't forget rounding. If one pasta sauce, whether it be this company or a different company, I mean, Aldi has a great yeah. no sugar pasta sauce, but if one has four carbs or five carbs and one has six, I'm gonna tell you this, they probably both have the same amount. It's just that they round and they're allowed to round. As a matter of fact, by law, they have to round and they're allowed to be off by 20%. My rule of thumb is whatever the label is, add one or at least add a half. So if the label says five, I'm gonna figure it's six. Not that I really count anyway, we just eat everything very low carb. And because we do it that way, we tend to not eat more than 20 or 30 total carbs in a day anyway. Usually we're around 10. But if something says zero, like heavy whipping cream, consider it one. You know what the worst thing that's gonna happen is? At the end of the day, you ate less carbs than you thought you did. It's a win. Ooh. 
That pizza looks delicious. Okay, so I weighed the pizza before we cooked it, but it was in the pan. Do I want to know how heavy this pizza is? Well, here's the thing. It's almost all meat. I, mean, I did not put a lot of cheese. It, it's a very meat heavy pizza and we are splitting this. Okay. So you want to see how much the pizza weighed? I'm not going to tell you how much it weighed with the pan. Okay. Let's weigh out the pan. The pan weighs a pound and six ounces. The pizza weighed five pounds. So that means that- I'm about to gain two and a half pounds? No, be, that means for the pizza actually weighs three and a half pounds. I thought it was gonna weigh four. So now that sounds like a lot of food, right? Yes. Three and a half pounds. Okay, but here is the thing. We go out, a lot of times we go to Brazilian Steakhouse, we eat more than two pounds each it's of true. beef, right? If you eat an entire pound of ground beef, that's not enough food for the day. That's like a thousand calories. You should be eating like two pounds of ground beef a day. You've eaten 40 ounces of prime rib. So that sounds like a lot of food, but we're splitting that. So you're not even eating two pounds. If you added this entire thing up, you're not even at 2000 calories. You know what I like? I like not weighing my food. <laughs> I too. like not tracking the ounces to put together. Me too. I like keeping the food as simple as possible and then eating until I'm full and then walking away from plates until I am hungry again. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I don't think we're each gonna be able to eat a half of that. I think there's gonna be leftovers and we may eat more later on. But the whole point of this was- What is the point, Joe? The point of it is somebody is going to leave a comment down below right now going, that's a lot of food. But neither one of us are gonna eat more than 1,500, 2,000 calories with this pizza. Well, and my thing is, I didn't ask for your opinion. That's fine, eat less. If that's what you enjoy and that's what's working for you, eat less. I mean, I think there was a time in my life where no one could have eaten as, li as little as I could eat. But you were gaining weight when you did that. I was gaining weight. I was not nourishing my body. Yeah. I didn't have the energy that I needed to sustain the life that I wanted to live. We are not supposed to avoid eating food. Right. We're supposed to eat food. You know what I never see Tabitha do or the cat do or the chickens do? Weigh their food. What do you have in the air fryer? So this is garbage pan pizza. That's right. Basically it's leftovers. And one of the leftovers that we had was some picanha and there's a giant fat cap to that. I didn't want to put the fat cap on the pizza. But I want to eat the fat. Okay. And so what I like to do is just take that entire fat cap that you like cut off that that still remains and I put it in the air fryer. Make like cracklings. To make it crunch up and then I eat it. Oh, that's like beef cracklings. That's gonna be Seriously. so good. I'm so excited about this pizza. I didn't think you were gonna be able to do that. I figured mm. this pizza was so heavy, you weren't gonna be able to pick it up, but The chicken it, crust it is. is very dense. I'm extremely happy with adding the chicken flour versus the pork rinds. Like I didn't think that the chicken flour would be as delicious as it is. Cause I always think of, you know, the pork flour or pork um, crumbs are gonna be like buttery, right? right? But there's so much fattiness in like the cheese and the sausage and you know, and I put butter on it. So it's really delicious. Well I got some good news for you. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to mention again, like this is mostly meat. You have, some, you have a little bit of cheese. There's probably about a half a cup of tomato sauce on the whole thing. So that would be a quarter of a cup of piece. That's a serving size of that piece yeah. of sauce. So three or four carbs. There's no vegetables on here. Yeah. So everything right. else meat is lovers. meat. So here's the thing. You have an egg. You have cheese in each one of us. This entire pizza, I, again, I haven't added it up because I didn't weigh every single component, but knowing how much cheese, like you have, a, say a carb of cheese, a carb in an ounce of Parmesan cheese, um, and then you have like a carb in an ounce of mozzarella cheese, your entire plate is less than six total carbs. Wow. Because it's all, Meat, meat and chicken, which is more than half of it because I put chicken on top and then chicken crust, 
if people are concerned about calories, that's why I'm telling you this pizza is less than 1500 calories if you added it up. It's because chicken is so low in calories and high in protein. How do you make four pounds of food be low in calories? <laughs> chicken. Chicken. And now I, just because we had some of this. Ooh, put a little dab on mine. We've got some of this pesto sauce. Pesto is the pesto. Ooh, I, that sounds good. Okay, I want to try this with some pesto sauce. Mm. So, do, wow. you, do you want to hear the really good news? I, I want a different piece. Do you want to hear the really good news with your um, chicken crust flour? Mm -hmm. So the actual recipe for the chicken crust 2.0, which I think is better than the original version. The original version was just Parmesan cheese, egg, and chicken breast. Whereas now we're adding in cream cheese and we're adding in the pork rind crumbs. But I think the chicken crust flour is better. It was supposed to be a quarter of a cup of pork rinds for each serving. And we made two servings. You needed a half a cup of pork rind crumbs. I only had about a quarter of a cup of the chicken crust. That's what and, we have. And I was going to add in the beef organ blend, which I figured you wouldn't taste because it would be a little bit. I wasn't worried about. Guess what? What? The chicken crust flour actually was enough. I didn't have to add any beef organs. So you need less of that than you do of the pork rinds. Wow. And it's got that chicken flavor. Which works well with the chicken already in the crust. And again, for people who are worried about fat because you're going to add so much fat on all of your toppings. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have fat as opposed to all of the pork rinds and stuff. There you go. But this is just a meat lover's pizza. I mean, listen, here's the thing. I don't want a tomato and cheese pizza. I want a pizza with junk. I want junk in my ice cream and I want junk on my pizza. Like, what about you? Like, what's your favorite toppings on pizza? Well, I love meat on pizza and I like a variety. I think we've established that, that like, I don't want a single thing, like a single ingredient thing. Like I always wanted Supreme. I didn't want pepperoni only or just ham. I always wanted loaded. I want everything loaded. And it don't get much more loaded than picanha on top of your pizza. Like this, it's so fatty, it's so delicious, but it actually heated back up in the Innova oven really well and didn't overcook when you, you know, made the cheese all melty on the pizza. Hold that thought. So you're talking about the Innova and it not overcooking. Mm -hmm. If you want a reason why to have an Innova oven, or um, listen, you can do this with any sous vide, your fat is done. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it with any sous vide, it's just easier than the Innova because you don't have to put it in a bag. But one of the hardest things to reheat is steak, right? Or beef. Yeah. Like if you go to Texas Roadhouse and get prime rib, you better finish it all there. Yeah. Which I can't because reheating prime rib, not the same thing. No, it's not. The reason is when you go to reheat it, you're going to continue the cooking process. So you like your rare beef at 128 to 133 degrees and you go home and you microwave it or you put it in the oven. Well, now you've just made the inside well done. But with the sous vide, like the Innova oven, you can put it in there at the temperature that you want to so just warm it up like 123 degrees, 124 degrees, which is a little bit lower than cooking it to medium to rare. If you were cooking to rare, you'd go to like 128. So you can put it at 128. It'll heat it up. But guess what? It won't cook it past 128. The result is beef that we cooked several days ago. Yeah. We reheat it up and you can see. It's still. An hour in the Innova mm -hmm. while we were preparing this and doing other things. And it's still a rare to medium rare piece of beef on a reheat. And you end up with the same exact texture. So that's what we like about it is that you could literally make a roast. In fact, we have another whole picanha that I've already cooked that I'm going to freeze. It's already cooked. So I'm going to put that into a vacuum bag. I'm going to freeze it. And now when I want to cook it later or eat it later, I can reheat it in the Innova and I'm not going to overcook it. It's alive. So, so much better way to reheat meat. And I know it is an expensive appliance. We use it every single day. And I can tell you that when Black Friday and stuff rolls around, they tend to put them like 25% off. So you know what? We spent way more money on than the Innova. All the throwing food, food away. That we threw away. That we purchased it, but we didn't consume it. And the leftovers were dissatisfying. Yeah. So for me, it was an investment on future meals and future enjoyment and like, 
it means that something that we cooked several days ago, I can enjoy tonight. You'd think we'd be sponsored by them, but we're not. We're not. I, I think it's just a, a really, really good, good appliance. Super tender. Well, that is gonna be the end of today's video. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take out the most recent video that I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we have garbage can pizza, you'll be alerted to it. Cheers. Bye. Bye.